What's poppin' everyone, Sean Lai here. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new, I share knowledge on my personal finance journey. So if that interests you, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button. Now on to the juicy stuff, HSAs. It stands for a health savings account. You may have come across this term while looking at different healthcare plans. I myself learned it from the financial independence community where I learned it was one of the best accounts to invest in. Though at the time, I was still on my parents' health plan, so it, it wasn't relevant to me, so I completely ignored it. But now that I turned 26, I had to get my own healthcare plan, and I chose a high deductible health plan that allowed me access to an HSA. It was a great decision for my situation, and it could be a fantastic one for yourself. Be sure to watch to the very end of this video because I'm going to give you a HSA tax loophole that you could use to earn hundreds of thousands of dollars if you use it correctly. Also, the HSA I'll be discussing is specifically for the United States. For all my friends in other countries, you might have a similar or different plan or even universal health care where you don't have to worry about this at all. Alright, so what exactly is an HSA? Going straight off of the healthcare.gov website, it's a type of savings account that lets you set aside money on a pre-tax basis to pay for qualified medical expenses. By using untaxed dollars in a health savings account or an HSA to pay for deductibles, co-payments, co-insurance, and some other expenses, you may be able to lower your overall healthcare costs. So there were a couple of medical terms in there that you may or may not know. I'll quickly go over them. So the three main medical terms were co-payments, deductibles, and coinsurance. These are known as out-of-pocket expenses and are very important healthcare terms. A copay is a flat rate you pay each time you visit a doctor or fill a prescription. A deductible is the annual amount you pay before your health plan starts to share the cost of medical services and medications. And lastly, coinsurance is the portion of the bill you pay after your deductible has been met, while your insurance pays for the other typical larger portion. You can also use your HSA to pay for other expenses, and these are medical expenses that have a lot of items that fall into this, including over-the-counter medication, vaccines, contact lenses, and eyeglasses. HSA funds generally may not be used to pay premiums. A premium is the flat amount you pay every month for your healthcare plan. You'll see this in your pay stub. You may be wondering now, how can you get an HSA? While you can use the funds in an HSA at any time to pay for qualified medical expenses, you may contribute to an HSA only if you have a high deductible health plan or an HDHP. Generally, a health plan including your marketplace plan that only covers preventative services before the deductible. Preventative services are routine health care that includes screenings, checkups, and patient counseling to prevent illnesses, disease, or other health problems. For plan year 2022, the minimum deductible for an HDHP is $1,400 for an individual and $2,800 for a family. When you view plans in the marketplace, you can see if they're HSA eligible, Joe. Uh, what? Meaning you can open up an HSA with that health plan. Why open a high deductible health plan? Well, if you're a healthy individual and don't expect any major medical costs in the future, then this is a great way for you to pay less in your premiums. That being said, if you are expecting a major medical bill such as surgery or you have a chronic illness where you have consecutive consistent medical bills to pay for, then a high deductible plan may not be the best choice for you. An HSA means you're paying less in premiums and if you're in a solid financial state to do so, you could max this out every single year in an HSA, which is a fantastic investment vehicle. My order of preference for investing is this. First, you have to have a solid emergency fund, typically three to six months, depending on your tolerance. Then it's to get your employer match for your 401k, then max out your HSA, afterwards max out your Roth IRA, and then go back and max out your 401k, and any money after that, you could put in a taxable brokerage account, real estate, your own business, whichever you'd like. 
The magic of an HSA comes when you invest with it. For 2022, if you have an HDHP, you can contribute up to $3,650 for self-only coverage and up to $7,300 for family coverage into an HSA. HSA funds roll over year to year if you don't spend them. You may have heard of an FSA or a flexible spending account, and with those at the end of the year, if you don't use it all, it's use or lose. So that money just goes away. But with an HSA, your money continues to roll over year after year. An HSA may earn interest or other earnings, which are not taxable. Here, other earnings may refer to the investments within your HSA that get capital gains and increase in value. For myself, I have an HSA with HSA Bank and I contribute every single paycheck into HSA Bank. Afterwards, I transfer that money from HSA Bank to TD Ameritrade where I can invest in stocks, bonds, ETFs, etc. just like I would in a Roth IRA, taxable brokerage account, or my 401k. I personally just simply invest in a total US stock market index fund that tracks the US market. Next, I'll go over why the HSA is such a powerful investing device and the tax loophole you can use to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. First of all, an HSA is triple tax advantage. And this is what I mean. The contributions into an HSA are pre-tax dollars. And then that investment in the HSA grows tax-free. And then you have tax-free withdrawals. Essentially what this means, if you are using the HSA to pay for qualified medical expenses, you won't pay any taxes on it. Now here comes the incredible tax loophole. Normally, people with an HSA will spend money on, say, contact lenses and then reimburse themselves using their HSA immediately. So they might spend $100 on their contact lenses and then use their HSA to get that $100 back. But what you can actually do is pay the $100 for that contact lenses and save the receipt. I myself put it in a Google Drive folder where I can store all of my medical receipts for year after year. And what this allows you to do is that you can keep that $100 in your HSA, in your investments that continue to grow. So instead of pulling your $100 out of your HSA, keep it in there and allow it to grow tax-free for decades. There is no rule with an HSA that says you have to pull out your money within a specific time. So you can pull out that $100 whenever you'd like, whether it be 20 years down the road or 30 years down the road. As long as you save that medical receipt, you can reimburse yourself. You decide when. The longer you wait, the more time you give your money to grow. If you have any questions on HSA or healthcare plans, leave a question down below and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Peace.